If you can boil water, you're on your way to learning the basics of cooking. On How to Boil Water, we'll combat cooking illiteracy with the simple foundations of a well-equipped kitchen and tips on food preparation. It's a kind of 12-step program to battle fear of the kitchen. We're all equal on How to Boil Water. Don't know the difference between a skillet and a sawtooth? <laughs> Don't worry. A skillet and a sawtooth may look similar, but they have distinct differences. The skillet, or frying pan, has low sloped sides to allow condensed steam to escape. A good skillet should be thick and warped proof since it's used over high heat. Skillets are perfect for browning meats and to accommodate the flipping of cooked foods. A sawtooth is a wide pan with straight sides that are higher than a skillet to retain condensed steam. A good sawtooth is equipped with a tight fitting lid and is designed for braising meats or any cooking where retaining liquid is critical. How to boil water is about tools, too. The basic utensils common to the preparation of many dishes. You don't need to crowd those drawers with every gadget you see on TV, but there are a few things you need to get started. Like this grater. It's a box-shaped sheet metal device punctured with a variety of hole sizes for grating, shredding, or slicing of carrots, cheese, and many other items. Your kitchen should definitely have a grater. What about those cooking tips that are just universal? How to boil water covers simple kitchen tricks to help ease the transition from recovering restaurant addict to self-healed master chef. Many recipes call for chopped, minced, or pureed garlic. Cover the clove with a heavy knife. Deliver a smash with your fist. The skin comes right off. Remove the end if desired, then just chop the garlic. This is coarsely chopped. If your recipe calls for minced garlic, go a little further. This technique is better than the standard garlic press, which always retains some of the clove. There, minced garlic, with none left behind in a press. If the recipe calls for pureed garlic, just sprinkle a little salt to release the juices. Then as you chop, Press down on the garlic with the side of the knife. There, pureed garlic. A diced onion means the chopped pieces are fairly even in size. Peel the onion and leave the root end attached to hold the onion together. Cut the onion in half right through the root. Place the half on its side and make cuts that go almost to the root. Then turn the knife sideways and make cuts going towards, but not all the way to, the root. The distance between the cuts will determine the size of the diced pieces. Now turn the knife for a series of vertical cuts. There diced onion. Julienne is a common term these days referring to a very thinly cut item, usually for a garnish. A julienne of this red pepper starts with removal of the core with a paring knife. Then cut the pepper in half. Remove the soft interior ribs. You can scrape or dump out the seeds. Trim off the top edge for an even julienne cut. Use 
needs a larger, sharper knife to accomplish the final step. Laying your fingers flat may result in an accident, so curl your fingers. Use your curled up fingers as a guide to move the knife in small increments for each cut. Here is a fine array of delicate julienne peppers. Some recipes call for peeled, seeded, chopped tomatoes. Start by making two shallow crossed cuts through the bottom of the tomato. The same technique works for any size or type of tomato. Lower the tomato into boiling water for 10 seconds. Don't leave it in any longer. The tomato may start to cook. Plunge the tomato immediately into a bowl of ice water. Leave it until it's cool enough to handle. The boiling and cold water plunge makes it easy to peel the tomato. It works for peaches, too. Core the tomato. To seed and juice the tomato, cut in half and squeeze away the juice and seeds. Now you can chop your peeled, seeded, and juiced tomato. Tomato paste does not keep very well once a can's been opened. Many recipes call for tablespoon measures of tomato paste. Once you've opened the can, place the leftover tomato paste in an ice tray in single tablespoon amounts. Freeze it, and you'll always have handy tomato paste cubes. Store them back in the freezer in plastic bags. Many recipes called for grated lemon rind. This lemon zester produces only the tasty outside part of the rind and leaves the bitter white pith behind. A standard grater would cut too deep. The zester creates decorative spirals that may also be chopped if needed. The lemon zester works beautifully with oranges too. There. You've just completed a first step toward freedom from the unknown. The kitchen's a beautiful place once you learn your way around. If you can stand the heat, stay in the kitchen and learn how to boil water. You are what you eat, and what you eat is what the Television Food Network is all about. It's the world's first 24-hour cable network devoted exclusively to food, glorious food. Not just how to eat it, but how to choose it, prepare it, present it, enjoy it, and how it affects your health. TVFN is also about fun and excitement, about travel and the world of exotic and ethnic cuisines you get to discover. But mostly it's about you and your family and the one thing we all have in common, food. The Television Food Network. It's good for you. And now, one of America's favorite home recipes. Hi, I'm Trish Means, and this is my little sister. Suzanne. And we're with... <laughs> we're making... Spaghetti pie. It's fast, easy, nutritious, and it's also a Weight Watchers recipe. <laughs> I'm starting by cooking two cups of spaghetti. I'm going to rinse this off, and Suzanne's going to start sautéing the vegetables and the ground beef. Okay. Take a little margarine and put it in the saucepan. Put it on a medium flame. Add a half cup of chopped green peppers and a half cup of chopped onions. Add an eighth tablespoon of garlic to that. And just sauté them up. Now to this. We want to add six ounces of lean ground beef. Yeah. Yep. And add that to the pan. Now you want to saute that till it gets nice and brown. Okay, while well, Suzanne's doing that, I'm going to stop making the crust. We take two cups of spaghetti, take an egg and beat it. And you pour that right onto the spaghetti. Then you're going to take an ounce of Parmesan cheese, stir that around. 
Okay, then you're going to take a tablespoon of margarine. You're going to take another teaspoon of margarine. Then you're going to mix that around. Okay, I'm going to spray the pan with pan so it doesn't stick. And then I'm going to bring the spaghetti mixture over and pour it into the pan. Next, I'm going to move the spaghetti around so it covers the sides of the dish and the bottom, kind of like a pie crust. Now, we're going to take a whole can of whole tomatoes and drain out the juice. Then you put it in another bowl and make sure that you cut it into small pieces. So when done with that, you're going to add it to the hamburger. Nice. Oops. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. Okay, while Suzanne finishes that up, I'm gonna put the ricotta cheese in. It goes right on top of the spaghetti after you've formed the spaghetti into a crust. Now what we do is we put the mixture right on top, right on top of the ricotta cheese. Then I'm gonna sprinkle some mozzarella cheese right on top. Then we're ready to bake. Goes in the oven on 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Thank you. Yeah, Okay, I'm just going to set this down for just a few minutes while it cools. There you go. There you go. And that's what it looks like. Mm hmm. Looks delicious, doesn't it? 